Hello YouTubes, Deej here with a quick tutorial on how to use Joystick Gremlin, Yaw Game Engine, and dual or single joysticks to control your Yaw 2 in any game. Without further ado, let's jump into it. I won't be covering the installation of the Yaw Game Engine or Joystick Gremlin as those are both fairly straightforward installs, but I will include links to where you can download both applications in the video description. The first thing we'll want to cover is how you can map inputs from dual joysticks into Game Engine. The step isn't necessary if you only have a single device that you want to control your yaw, but it's still useful to know as you're most likely going to need to know how to do these virtual mappings at some point. We'll start in Game Engine and select Axis and Vibration. From here, we will want to add an X, Y, and Z input with respective outputs to Pitch, Roll, and Yaw as can be seen currently on screen. The input is what the direct input device inputs to Game Engine, and the output is what the device's data translates into movement on your yaw. With that out of the way, let's hop into Joystick Gremlin and map our joysticks to the virtual joy inputs we'll be using in Game Engine. I fly with right stick Y controlling pitch, and right stick X controlling yaw. Roll is controlled with my left stick X. So we'll need to rebind right Y to VJoy Y, right X to VJoy X, and left X to VJoy Z. Now, if we compare how this correlates in Game Engine, right Y maps to pitch, right X maps to yaw, and left X maps to Z. To confirm this works, click on the gamepad on the top left so it turns green, then hop over to Game Engine. You'll want to make sure your yaw is stopped so as to prevent any unintentional movements. Click on Start Plugin and then select VJoy Device. Now, if we click on Dashboard and move our joysticks, you'll see that changes in our inputs are reflected in the Output tab. Now that your inputs are mapped correctly to Game Engine, you'll want to minimize Joystick Gremlin and pop out your dashboard into a separate window using the icon on the top right of the page. This allows us to see how multiplier values change device output in real time. Now go back into Axis and Vibration. You'll see for every input slash output pair, there's two multipliers. The top bar represents the multiplier from when you increase from zero, while the bottom bar represents the multiplier for when you decrease from zero. By default, you'll see that my input range is from zero to one, making my zero actually 0 0.5. So the first thing I need to do is change the input offset to be minus 0 0.5. Now you'll see that pitch centers at zero, and as I move my right stick forward and back, the output values are increasing one to one with what my input value is. Now my stick increases in value when I pull back on the stick, and it decreases in value when I push forward. So I need to inverse the pitch multipliers with the inverse radio. Now, since I want my maximum pitch angle to be 50 degrees, I'll need to set the top multiplier to 100 since it's simply taking the value of my input and multiplying it by 100. For pitch forward, I only want 15 degrees since that's the maximum pitch forward range for my chair, so I'll set the multiplier to 30. You can add smoothing, however know that this smoothing applies to both the bottom and top end of your maximum input range, so it's not the best tool for preventing jerky behavior, and I usually leave it somewhere between 80 and 90. Instead, if you hop on over to Device Parameters, if you feel your chair is too responsive, you can just reduce the amount of power that's delivered to it. This is largely a personal preference thing, so you'll need to tinker with power and or smoothing values till you get movement you're happy with. Now that you've done that, you'll want to repeat these steps on your other inputs and outputs, which I'll do quickly. Finally, once all of that is done, you'll want to test. Begin by recentering your yaw, make sure your output values are all close to zero, and then hit Start Device. Now, slowly test your inputs and sticks to make sure that they're working properly. The last step is to make it so you can do 360 degree yaw for untethered VR games. To do this, simply change the component type on your yaw axis to incremental, and then play around with the modifiers until you find a speed that works for you. This will make your yaw output increase and decrease incrementally instead of returning to zero. With all that out of the way, and with some more tinkering, you've now got direct input set up so you can control your yaw too. 
Since this doesn't require telemetry data, it should work on any game that you can use your joysticks with. You could do something similar with wheels. Thanks for watching till the end, and I hope you learned something. Stay tuned as I'll be making some more tutorials for the Yaw 2. My next video will be how to use Track IR in 2D simulation games such as Star Citizen with a VR headset. Until next time, bye now. This is the end of this video.